Hey, everybody. I'm Denali Bell, and welcome to The Soapy Box. Today, we have on our show Tyler Bell and Nicole Rennick again, both co-creators here at The Soapy Box, and we're going to discuss the disturbing documentary about the Duggar family, Shiny Happy People. I watched it and begged these two to watch it because I was so disturbed by it. I had so many emotions come up. I was frustrated, sad, heartbroken, angry. It was crazy. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I I had no idea about who these people were beforehand. And yeah, and wow. especially me, like I watched the show yeah, growing you knew up. Yeah, about it. Yeah, it's weird. So well, that is interesting. So did you see them differently before this? Before you watched the documentary? Oh yeah. I mean, I feel like they, they just really painted themselves as shiny happy people. Such <laughs> so, a great name, so isn't it? It's yeah. a perfect Aptly name named. for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's crazy because it's like even Jim Bob, the dad, mm-hmm. you know, you totally thought he was just the best father figure. And then you watch this and you're like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> it's not looking you know, like it. Interesting. <laughs> interesting. And you grew up in a, a Christian home, right? So you were yes. having like religion and going to church. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I did and you, I did not. I didn't grow up in a church. Um, I believed in God, mm-hmm. right? But I didn't grow up. Mm-hmm. in any kind of organized religion. And then you, we went yeah. to a few non-denominational churches. Yeah. But how would you describe your experience since this is my son? Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like we went to church occasionally. Yeah. I I feel like I wasn't forced to go and I would go on my own time. I feel like I always believed in God. Mm-hmm. Straight a little far <laughs> in my late teens and stuff like that. But I always came, I came back and then, but yeah, the upcoming, we, we went to church and it was good. We had a, a healthy relationship, I think. Yeah. I, I would say just so you have a, um, some context to the perspective of who we are, I guess, in this conversation, I think it's important to say that I am a Christian. I am a believer. Mm-hmm. I probably am closer to God than ever. I think even when I was going to church, when you were a kid, mm-hmm. I didn't fully understand the relationship with God. Yeah. And so um, I've, Me I think I'm understanding that at a more full level and, Me too. and probably walking with God closer than ever, I would say about myself. I completely agree with myself I too. I've never too. been as close. Yeah. I don't think any of us have. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool, huh? That is pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it's neat. <laughs> okay. That being said, we were still all disturbed by this. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't feel like it represents anything any of us has experienced. No. Or is that not true? I don't know. Um. um a little bit, maybe for you. Yeah, I was in a more You're Baptist different. community. Oh. So they did talk a lot about the Southern Baptist community, mm-hmm. which, mm-hmm. you know, we, I grew up in Wyoming mm-hmm. and lived between Wyoming and Arizona. So I didn't, I, I wasn't familiar with that. Mm-hmm. We didn't have that where, that type of religion, I guess, yeah. or weren't exposed to it. Yeah. So mine is more of a tight knit Romanian community. So, um, most of them are immigrants, freshly in America, so they're still trying to figure out. I guess my whole childhood was our church trying to figure out their values and how they wanted to implement it mm-hmm. now that they're in a different place. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like a lot of their upbringing in church was very similar to mine, especially with the expectations for women, mm-hmm. um, mostly just stuff like that. Okay. Just the little simple things, not as extreme as... Yeah. what they were painted as, you know, yeah. but. So I've visited the church you guys now attend, which I love, mm-hmm. right? When I come yeah. visit you guys, Pillar, we go to yeah. the Pillar Church. If I you're in near Scottsdale, Arizona, go to the Pillar Church. Yeah, we they love got it. the spirit there, I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's what I felt was missing yeah. from everything we watched. It felt like if I were to describe this church, mm-hmm. it was legalistic it was rules-based and I never heard one word about the Holy Spirit. Even, I didn't even think I heard about Jesus. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I heard the word Jesus or the Holy Spirit, uh-uh, which mm-hmm. is interesting. And I just watched two of the episodes again, just to refresh for yeah. this. And I, I didn't. And I was kind of watching. I forgot because you'd said that earlier. Yeah. So that's interesting. It is so strange. It was all rules and what happens if you disobey. Yeah. And I think they're and they basically did have a leader in a sense. Yeah. You know, it felt more cultish to me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like any cult that you like, I studied even in college, or and you're you know you just graduated with a degree in um, forensic psychology, so you've taken abnormal psych classes. You've yeah probably studied counterculture. Yeah. And 
I just see there's like these things, and I can't remember all the the right words because I went to college a lot longer than you <laughs> go. But um, there was like specific things that you would see. Um, I guess even like in Charles Manson or <laughs> these cults, there's always like this leader. There's always this sexualized component, and there's always there's lack of freedom yep. where people. The word I kept seeing was break free, break away. Yeah, like I can't mm-hmm. imagine ever feeling like that going to your church or to the church that I go to. Yeah, yeah. There's, I've never felt like anyone needs to break free. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think people just kind of come and go as they please and there's no, there's no manipulation. Yeah, 100%. I completely agree. I f- feel I lucky feel like that we go to a good church. that's really prevalent in denominations, you know? Is yeah. it? I feel like we, we just, especially you guys, I mean, I grew up in a denomination, mm-hmm. but once I stopped going to a denominational church, I notice that it's a lot more free and more, um, it's just more pushing the word rather than yeah. anything else. Well, because that's what I associate Christ with is freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. where I, I guess, built my relationship is that freedom from bondage. Mm-hmm. And this looks like bondage. Yeah. This looks like bondage. This looks like a perversion of scripture. Everything mm-hmm. I felt like they believed, it was perverted in some way yeah. and changed in half half twisted yeah. like a nice nice tool for the devil it felt like yeah you know it it felt like this is if i were the enemy walking on this earth this is what i would do yeah to one just harm people as much yeah. as i could from a relationship with christ mm-hmm. and then to make sure that they don't ever want a future one and it feels like that happened to a lot of these kids on yeah. the show yeah they didn't seem to desire that. With it, an exception, and I don't know the girl's names. Is D- Duggar the Jill? Um, Jill. It, it feels Jill? like she yeah. still believes. Yeah, yeah. She's she talked about believing still, which I find pretty cool that you can go through all that church hurt. I think still. they all do. Yeah. yeah. In their family. Yeah. 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 It, it maybe, and I could be wrong. That I mean, I'm just saying it seemed like yeah. some of those folks were so hurt by religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that they did. and that's the that's the shame because it was it was centered around religion and not the relationship with Jesus and what Jesus died yeah. for. You know what I mean? And that sucks because it painted such a weird tone about Christianity on the whole documentary. So if yeah. you're an outsider mm-hmm. watching an atheist, like that's how you see Christianity. Yes. But for us, we're like that is so messed up, yes. so separate from what we actually believe and how we feel. You know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like this is why. Jesus wasn't a part of religion. He was like, I am just the way and that's it. Yes. You know, follow me. That's it. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, there's, there's a necessity in church, which I, I never used to believe. I just thought my relationship was good, but there's a necessity in having fellowship yeah. with other believers. Mm-hmm. But I, again, this was one of those things where they turned that mm-hmm. into a rule, into a man-made tradition and took Every scripture that they they said mm-hmm. felt a little twisted. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. you felt like everything was twisted? Yeah. Well, I feel like that's a part of like the fundamentalism that yes. they were talking about, where they took it literally. So, if you're in the Old Testament, it says not to do something. It I mean it means it literally. Obviously, like we right. follow the law because. We, you know, I mean, <laughs> right? It's like, a part oh, of like do not murder. But yeah. Yeah. Jesus says that it, means to hate your brother too. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you think it, yep, you it, have done it that, already. Right. Yeah. But I feel like the whole the whole point of the New Testament is to show that you are saved by believing in him. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Not the things that you Not do. because you went to church and followed a long list of rules. Yeah, exactly. And and I think that they just made the rules. It was just completely legalistic. You know what I mean? It was. And and like the pamphlet that they had, that lady brought out, the pamphlet, that was crazy to me because yeah. it was like if you sin this is what it looks like and it's like a horrible hellscape looking it depiction was, of know. what happens you right. know? even they their did, board games yes uh-huh. yeah <laughs> they did the a great games. job with, with that board game yeah. of creating and many other things of creating a culture of fear and shame mm-hmm. yes. which is the opposite yes. of what Christ came to do 100% this is the commands of Christ board game which is super fun and traumatic. Here you have the the venomous pit of bitterness, the torture pit of temporal values, and then the miry pit of moral impurity. There's temptation to be bitter, and then temptation to lust, temptation to worry, 
Temptation to worry. How do you not worry about that? <laughs> they set you up for failure. It was really a culture of so much. Like, so I was kind of trying to divide up the kind of abuses here for our notes today. Yeah. And it was it was so long. It was every kind of abuse that you could inflict on a human being mm -hmm. I saw in that documentary. Yeah. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse, emotional abuse. It it was just so disturbing to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ugly. I was looking at the Duggar family's Instagram, and from what I've noticed, there's still about 10 kids living in that house. Wow. So I'm really curious to if they were, they're still in IVLP or if those kids have exposure to the internet to see this documentary. Yeah. Well, I wonder if Jill has a relationship with her family. I don't think she does. Okay. I really don't think she does. Well, she said. I like, know that she said she was distant from a lot of them. She didn't that. talk to the father. Like the last time she talked to the father is when um, that text that came through. Oh and she, yeah. That that surprise random text. Or whatever, the one right? from the random number. Yeah. But it's pretty clear that it was mm -hmm. from him. So I heard that they were making eight hundred thousand dollars a season, right? Yeah. Let's start with the financial abuse. Yeah, let's start there. Yeah, sorry, we're jumping around. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I think okay. that's perfect place yeah. to start. The financial abuse was crazy i was just like your whole lives were broadcasted and you didn't get paid for it mm -hmm. you know when i was growing up there were many child actors who ended up suing their parents because they didn't get paid or the money was yeah. squandered and and some of them won or they got emancipated mm -hmm. early like i don't know if you guys remember macaulay culkin or yeah. drew barrymore i yep. think um yep. the kid from different strokes i can't remember his I don't name remember that Oh, that was before your time. Yeah, it was. But they they, <laughs> they had these prolific careers, yeah. and then their parents spent all the money, and they had nothing. Isn't that crazy? And then they're also almost unemployable if yeah. they're not going to be continue being actors, yep. and there's no money. Mm -hmm. because. And it's an overly competitive yes. thing, you know, obviously. You know, it's crazy. And so you see this family, and I cannot remember the girl's name. Is it Jill? It's Jill, the one that was yes. mostly yeah, in the Jill. documentary. Okay. That's Jill. Okay. So... The thing that irritated me the most, of course, was the manipulation um, that this, the kind of abuse that they used over these girls and the, and the TV show mm -hmm. to hide everything, to sweep everything under the rug. And they knew these kids weren't getting paid and said, take it up with your dad. Mm -hmm. And seven and a half years of this girl's adult life, she didn't get paid a dime. And you know what's crazy? So... Uh, and they tricked them into signing a contract the, the night before contract on their wedding. Insane. Yes, when they're busy. When they're busy, and they just design, do it. It sounds like to continue doing the show to get money. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So, and it seems like that was they did not want to do that show. They they did not want to be a part of TV anymore. They were over no. it. Jill was over it. And it seemed to be kind of a continuing theme that the women and children mm -hmm. are used to take care of. The finances, mm -hmm. yeah. but they don't get to participate in the finances. Yeah. So when they started paying the family members, mm -hmm. it was only the boys at first. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, I even missed that part. Also, uh -huh. did you did you notice the whole part where they said it was Jill and Jenna, I believe, that yeah. said they were sexually abused by Josh, correct? Yes. Yep. Did you ever notice that when they said that they canceled the show, when those allegations came out, they had a whole spinoff that was based on Jill and Jenna's life because they were the victims? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I, re I realized so that they, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's, that's insane. Why, yeah. They chose them two for a reason. That's crazy. Yes, they did. I didn't even connect that. I didn't either. I was, I was mad that they victimized them again mm -hmm. by making them go on Megyn Kelly, and they said oh. it was of their own volition. It was but, scripted. But it wasn't, because they didn't have any agency. Yeah. They yeah. felt re like they had to go save the family. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, and then she said that, right? Them, Jill said yep, that, right? And who made them feel that way? Yeah, Even exactly. though she said they went voluntarily, that's not voluntarily. You can... That's a manipulated... Just look at them during yeah. the whole, whole thing. Through the whole podcast, you could tell she was still trying to be cautious. Yeah. Yes. You know? Yeah, and that makes sense. I mean, it's your family. You get yeah. care for them, you know? Of course. Yeah, I guess I'm just a little more angry at the dad then. Yeah. We don't have emotional <laughs> attachment to the dad. Yeah. I have a little emotional attachment. <laughs> Not a healthy one. <laughs> so, these women and children um, are clearly 
the draw for the show, as they stated in the documentary. But then I noticed they're also slave labor, mm -hmm. right? They're slave labor, not just on the show, but to hear the other kids talk in the documentaries. Super interesting. Yeah. So they are also slave or labor for the church. System. Yes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 11 years old. Yeah. The what was the buddy system? Where um, the older kids kind of got their own buddies. Uh -huh. How the mom said, uh, the mom Michelle said that until like a year old, she's her kid's buddy. And then after a year, the buddy gets passed down to an older sibling. Oh. So each younger kid that was born was given an older kid that's like over 11 years old as a buddy that raised them. Wow. Yep. So she, so. I mean, the mom have, only took care of the kids for, for the, the first, first year. year. That's crazy. basically until she probably weaned off of breastfeeding or yes. something that required her time. So with no supervision, you can see why sexual abuse could happen. Yeah. Yep. Like who's, as you have 11 year olds raising the kids yeah. who are experimenting and understand, not understanding their changing bodies. No excuse for the brother. No, no excuse no. for the brother. I'm just saying, but yeah. look at he the doctrine that they were case. told. Yes. Look at the doctrine that they're told. It was so sexual oriented. It was weirdly it was sexual. Weird. It didn't everything feel sexually charged. Yeah. Yes. There okay. was a root there. You could feel it. Was and it was, root. I mean, like the, the whoredom and the slut shaming that happened. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You know from, what I mean? Oh, do you remember what the whoredom was from? If a woman winks. Oh, uh -huh. wow. That's yep. crazy. Well, one of the points that one of the women in the podcast, or not the podcast, the show made was she kind of worded it like, you know, you walk in and then you hear like, oh, don't look at your sister's boobs. And then yeah. you have to think about your yeah. sister's boobs. Then and why you would you not up. think about it? My parents never it's said like anything like that If to you're me. constantly just putting those thoughts, uh -huh. those kids yeah. are going to... Be it's, curious. Yeah. It's you such know? a weird thing that they would have to say. But one of the girls in the documentary said that this was just normal. Like, yeah. so many families experience this. And of course, uh -huh. so many of those boys became sexually deviant in the most inappropriate ways. Yeah, I mean, look uh -huh. how the brother turned out after yeah. everything. I mean, like, they found so much, like, kitty porn on his stuff. Like, crazy. Absolutely And he insane. was so protected by so many people. By his father, yeah. by the sheriff, by the show. They all knew. And the sheriff ended up going to prison. For 60 years. Yeah, after he gave him a good talking to. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, you know, the kid didn't have a chance at getting any real help. No. Mm -mm. Because the show. Yeah. They because kept the money. Putting the cameras in his face. Mm -hmm. And the part that disturbed me, like, I was like, are you serious? Is when, or on their marriage, the, the night they got married and they went into the room. They were, they were, they were recorded. They were about it. to go have. You know, and like they wouldn't have done, yeah. you know, the they wouldn't make the marriage, right? But they wouldn't have put any footage like that for any of the girls. No, absolutely they only not. for him. They did that for him and because they, he's a man. <laughs> well, what, yes. And then and to try, try to also it, normalize him that he's not a rapist. They're, they're, yeah. yeah they're, well, and they're trying to show like, this is his life, you know, when he was young and these are the different steps and they mm -hmm. try to make it light. But it's like, that is a private moment. You do not expose that. That was weird. As, considering yeah. all the sexual the girls, problems that he's gone it. through. That you're gonna highlight this sexual moment with this woman? It's it was what? just weird. It, it felt uncomfortable. I watched. It and I was like, no, and I don't know what? where this was at in the documentary. So was this at a point where everyone, the whole world, already knew what he'd done? So it was after. I don't know if you remember the point where they kind of gave him a book on. Oh, I teach him what sex was. Yeah. yeah. But after, but it but was. But he was making the worst so comments weird. about it, and he's yeah. like, "Is there examples?" Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. And all that and. It was after the whole thing. The dad was acting like a bro with him, and yeah, <laughs> it was weird because yeah. that that was after what all of these girls came out, right? I think so. Yeah. If you have an opportunity to set an example about like teaching your kids about sex, take advantage of it and use it. Like, let the spirit come through you and teach it. If mm -hmm. it's going to be on camera, first of all, I just, like what? It's weird. How do you not <sighs> think twice about like what you're putting <laughs> you're putting your I mean face. they just didn't look at men and women the same obviously no. there's no. a reason why when that anonymous text was sent he worded his own daughter as a beautiful untouched virgin yeah. not he How does that just make my stomach like Ugh. really that's a, purity was the only requirement for a woman men yeah. had to do everything else and that's why he oh, I think they like, also have to show up and film and make yeah. that money and bake their bread. Yeah, yeah bake their bread, <laughs> yeah. the dishes and clean the kitchen. But to a surface level for them, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. Josh had way they, more they power. They seem like tools, yeah. not real like humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Well, it's kind of, you're like farming children pretty much. You, that's what it felt like. Well, they kind of had, like, that's what their goal was to spread the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> or Josh is or in religion. prison right now too for 12 years. Wow. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. 12 years. Is that for the child porn? Yeah. Issues? Yeah. He's a sex offender now. So, hmm. Interesting. So, that culture of incest that was so normalized was so interesting. And what you said, like, don't look when you were t- they were saying, "Hey, don't look at your sister's boobs," and you think you think about your sister's boobs. Yeah, like we did not talk like that about. in my family, and we didn't makes, talk about each other's body yeah. parts in that kind of if way. If a problem rises up, then you would say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, but, but it wasn't like this hyper vigilance. Yeah. I think of, it makes sense why a lot of them boys and the men sexualized young yes. women because crazy. you were just taught about your siblings basically you weren't really taught about other women mm-hmm. what i've noticed at least yeah. you know there's also a saying that comes to mind the speed of the leader is the speed of the pack and if you at the top level have this bill Goth- Goth- gothard gothard mm-hmm. yeah yeah guy um uh, molesting girls, I guess, allegedly, because yeah. he's not been arrested, but I believe them. Mm-hmm. So allegedly molesting these girls, inappropriately touching them, inappropriately putting them in horrible positions. When you have that kind of culture, that spreads. Yeah, that spreads. absolutely. It, even if he's and not he, saying I'm doing it, there's hints, there's clues that people pick up on. Well, there's, his whole message was like yes. there was so sexual forward, you know what I mean? And he preached his about authority a lot, obviously, right? Like and mm-hmm. authority is an interesting thing, but they he perverted it. He did. And he put himself above the man of the house and, and the leader of the church, right? And you <laughs> you make yourself the authority on something and you are not you're a poor authority, the fruits of that comes out. Well, that is the fruit, right? Yeah. So as the head of the church, he does have some authority, right? Yeah. But he perverted the authority. Yeah. And he didn't handle it like Christ would. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He handled it like a sinful man would. Yeah. And there was poor fruit that was super evident. <sighs> that was that was hard. And then I mean, sexual abuse in your kids is common. That's a normal thing. And well, and like some of the teachings, like the girl couldn't have tampax or tampons yeah. because hmm, she was then it, they, she would use them for sexual pleasure. And I'm just gonna say. I have never derived any sexual pleasure from a tampon. <laughs> and just sorry that my son is here, but it's <laughs> the most ridiculous thing that a useful is, tool to help a woman during a yeah. time of month that's not fun. Yeah. And to pervert it mm-hmm. into something sexual is so demeaning. It just angered me. Yeah, it was gross. And then, I mean, there's just so many areas. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the modesty area. Okay. So... I am a Christian. I believe in modesty. Mm-hmm. This is my problem I have with their teaching. And because I, I, I do think like if I had a daughter, I'd want to teach her modesty. Yeah, I wouldn't want absolutely. her to draw inappropriate attraction that's mm-hmm. not necessary. Yeah. I didn't like the onus that they put on all women to take care of like men's being monsters. Not not that all men are monsters. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> all men are freaking pigs. <laughs> I mean, like that. But these monstrous men who can't seem to, you know what I mean, control themselves, yeah. that they're responsible for it. And if something bad happens, it's then their fault. Yeah. So if the girl gets raped or molested, somehow it's her fault. Yeah. And that's what one of these um, girls on Twitter, actually, she was showing some of the pamphlets from her time with IB. IBLP? Yeah. And it was counseling on if you were sexually abused. Basically, it was shaming the victim. How was this your fault? <laughs> you know, how, what could you have worn or done differently to yeah. not make this happen? Isn't Did you crazy? cry out? Because if you don't cry out, then, you know, it's really your fault. Disgusting. It was so Disgusting. horrifying. Horrifying. And you can just see how it sets up a system for women and children to be abused. Mm -hmm. And let's go into the physical abuse. Let's talk about the spanking, which also that was physical, but it felt a little sexualized with that little boy. It was was a demonstration and it was like a slap pat, like a slight pat on his behind. Mm -hmm. And he just kept doing it and kept doing it slowly. Like 
by a stranger, by not his father. Yes. By and when he would stop, he would just keep his hand on it. Yeah. Yes. And I so thought that weird. that was even weird. It was too. just creepy. You the could whole thing was feel creepy. The sexual charge. Someone who would loan me a little boy, I would show you how to spank a boy and bless him at the same time right now. And you got one coming? Well, just bring him around here and bring him on up here. I said, what's your name? Jason. Jason. Wow, that's a fine name. Well, Jason, I'm going to pretend that I'm your dad for a moment, okay? I want to tell you, Jason, you know, that daddy's not pleased with the way you've, you've acted today. And you know it's wrong, right? And so uh, I'm going to spank you. So lean over here right now. Jason, you're a fine boy. You're going to grow up to be an outstanding man. God's hand is on your life, son. Now, okay, let's see. You understand? Did you understand now? Okay, well, give Daddy a hug. I don't think you put yourself into that hug, son. So let's let's thank a little more. Let's see if we can get a good hug out of this. Let's see. Give Daddy a hug. They believed in physical punishment for nearly everything. It was it disgusting. Was gross. It I was gross. When I was watching that, I was just viscerally uncomfortable. It, it was I could so not believe it. For so many reasons. And I, yeah. I just watched it again. I'm like, because I was so upset about it. And I thought, they just taught this kid that his body isn't his own. Yeah. Yep. That a stranger can Bam. touch him mm -hmm. and he has to accept it because this man's an authority. Unbelievable. He just set this kid up. I mean, that's what grooming looks like to me. Yeah, that of that that was like sexual grooming, even. Yeah, like, I agree. I mean, that at worst, mm -hmm. okay, at worst, at best, he's just opened that kid up to some other issues. I guess. Yeah, dude, damn. Unbelievable. Yeah, but the spanking didn't stop there. So women were also subject to being spanked, even yeah. as adults, even as adults. So in that's their crazy. in their tools and their documents, you can also Discipline your wife. So if she doesn't make your kid be quiet when you get home from work, you can beat your wife. It's like, why is that the first go-to? Why is that like, why are you giving permission to f people who love control to physically abuse their family? I think it actually attracts people who would want to do exactly. that. Exactly. So then you start finding a lot of people in that place that do that because yep. they just got Because, yep, yeah. they just got permission to be psychopaths. I have seen different churches in different denominations act differently, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I have seen a Catholic church on one side do one thing and a Catholic church in another district do another thing. And you can even see it online where some people are supporting things and some people are not. Mm -hmm. So let's just be fair about that. But t could you tell us a little bit about what happened yesterday oh, that you <laughs> found out about? Yeah, the Arizona Supreme Court, I believe... Um, just passed a law saying that the Mormon church doesn't have to report their sexual abuse that happens in their community. So one, that tells me somebody wants to cover up sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Our government is complicit and okay with it. Mm -hmm. Who on earth would give any organization, I do not care, that I kind of horrible. freedom? Unbelievable. I, I don't even understand who to vote that. I don't understand yeah. what type of persuasion you would have to give people that aren't aware of the Mormon church for them to be like, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea to pass this. Because I, I have two friends that I know personally who have been abused within that church. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I am not saying that this happens in every church, right? Yeah, yeah. I just know that they were physically abused, sexually abused in that church. And I wonder, like, I mean, I could probably talk to them because they're pretty forthcoming with their stories if they're okay with that. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, Horrible. this is insanity. We're especially in a place of God too, you know. Yeah. Because again, if you're the enemy, where would you want to wreak the most havoc? His home. Right? Yeah. Anyone on their way to finding truth? Yep. Yeah. Then destroy their ability to want to seek it. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. It is. It I'm sorry. I guess I'm a little steamed about this one. It's so crazy. the spanking, so it's okay to spank the children. It's okay to spank the, mm -hmm. the wives. And the idea is if anyone doesn't act right in this book of wisdom that mm -hmm. they have, it's, it's appropriate to spank them. Yeah. Not men, but just the women and children. And that leads me to the blanket training. Yeah, that was a wild, that was a trip for me. I couldn't believe it. Could you explain Four to kids. us? Do you remember 
So basically you would put a blanket on the floor and you would put a baby in the middle of the blanket and their favorite toy on the outside of the blanket. And if they try to reach to it, you hit them. So you hit the baby for reaching for a toy. That seems weird. Well, it's to teach obedience, right? So I believe also if there was a toy within the blanket, they were allowed to play with it. But I think they continued it on into their toddler years because I remember the mom, Michelle, making a comment like, yeah, sometimes I tell my my kids like, okay, it's blanket time, you know? Okay, so that's the creepiest thing I ever heard. So I just listened to it again. And oh, you should have heard her, her, that little sweet baby talk that she does, trying to coax her child, teaching people how to do this, to coax the child onto the blankets beating session. It was so disgusting. And her voice, I have to tell you, just sends me through the roof. It me too. It was a trip. Fake. It seems I thought that comment was funny that was made in the documentary of, yeah, she used to be a cheerleader. She definitely has a voice. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't it seem, did it seem fake to you? Oh, of course it's fake. Well, of course. If if it rubs you wrong off immediately, all of us were all like, what the hell is going on here? (laughs) I mean, you even, she's just, I don't know if you even noticed, like when Jim Bob would be speaking in front of a crowd. She would not look at the crowd. She would be mm-hmm. looking straight at him and she would not break contact. Well, she better not. She'd probably get beat when she gets home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Honestly, yeah. <sighs> I mean, with those morals, of that course. documentary was only a, a glimpse. We don't know what actually really happened. And, and all the rest of the families, too, that took advantage of this system. And disgusting. there is a certain type who, like you said, would mm-hmm. be attracted to this system. Yeah. And you wonder why a girl wouldn't cry out. Well, you know why? Because they get beat if they cry. And they also just and don't then, know better. Do, do you, you know? Hear? That's the sad thing is they really yeah. didn't know better in their childhood. They don't. Because why? Because if you cry, you're going to get beat till you quit, till you learn to not cry. So mm-hmm. then guess what happens? You get sexually abused. And then if you didn't cry out, which you were already, that was beaten out of you, mm-hmm. you weren't really sexually abused. Well, that's the problem with like the fundamentalism, right? Because you take everything literally and you take, well, if you're, Taking the Bible literally, you're going to take what your parents say literally. But I don't think there's anything in the Bible that really truly represents anything they said. I agree. I completely agree. Not even literally. Like, yep. it was insane. It was weird. It was, it was an insane cult to me. Well, and I find it so interesting that, like, all these people were a part of it and saw it, and nobody had the spirit to speak up. Nobody well, nobody saw that had the spirit that, conviction that it was wrong. Well, they didn't even they, they didn't you know, know what about I mean? Jesus. They didn't know about the spirit. They didn't know about the they spirit. They weren't talking they about, about the spirit. Jesus, right? I mean, I don't know, we're guessing on that. Yeah. But I'm guessing when you have the Holy Spirit, there's some discernment, there's some conviction that happens. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There was nobody said anything about it. Everybody just went along with the rules, and that was crazy. Well, you always th- you think about the people who broke free. Yeah. Like God speaks to people, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's they true. broke free. That's true. Hmm. All right. So the emotional abuse. Oh, I mean, just hand in hand with everything that just happened. I mean, it was so, I think that was actually my longest notes was Mm -hmm. on the emotional abuse because it's, well, that's what it takes to to get somebody talked into the financial abuse, to get them talked into the sexual abuse. You Mm -hmm. have to start with their emotions and their mental health and destroy that Mm -hmm. so that you're able to, you know, manipulate them into taking care of you and doing all of your will. I would guess. That's where it starts. I would guess. Abuse. That's what it looked yeah. like. Yeah. Well, the whole, what Bill Gothard was teaching was posturing and priming them for the abuse, really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you can, I, I, I agree fully. The, the thing that really bothered me was the daughter who was forced to be on air even though she said she went there voluntarily, she really wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then she was forced to lie because then the story changed obviously later. And they just, they didn't have the agency to say no to that man in that moment. And they were manipulated into taking care of the family. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like that with everything. Mm -hmm. And they, they used fear and shame, which are not tools of God. Those are tools of the enemy. Yeah. Fear and shame constantly to, okay, you're going to ruin the family. This is going to happen. Play, you know, if everything, the devil's going to get you if you do this. Instead of teaching them the freedom of Christ, yep. of walking in 
with God and with authority. Yeah, they Remember were just that taught wife? that. That, sin or worry was a sin. Oh yeah, yeah. worry. Yeah, I mean, well, it, worry is a sin. Yeah, yeah but I agree. for them it was more. They, yes, well, their condemnation came with it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, like, sorry, keep going. No, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, condemnation <laughs> came with it, and that's that's all they learned was the legalism of, I mean, like sin, Satan, death, right? Sin brings death in the in the, the life that we have now, right? And I think but it does not condemn us in our eternal save, salvation. Exactly. So yeah. here's here's what I felt like they were doing with the kids is they were scaring them with the devil. Yeah. Instead of teaching them, they were saved. Because mm-hmm. yeah. um, if they were saved, mm-hmm. there would be no need to fear the devil. As a Christian, you you're saved once. You may sin again. You know what I mean. You may yeah. make a mistake. You might do that. But. You well, your focus, like where, where's the center of your focus? Is it Christ? No. No, it's, it's on negativity. It's and, on the enemy. And then those kids are so, that's what I noticed mm-hmm. in the documentary. They're so afraid of the devil. Yeah. And there should have been no fear if they were yeah, saved. They have authority. Yeah. Well, in addition to that, they're saved. Yeah. They were saved. afraid of You're going sa- to hell. Yeah. They were afraid if they sinned, they went to hell. Mm-hmm. So it was a total- Legalis- m- Legalism. Manipulation. Manipulation. Because yeah. it's clearly in the Bible- the You're whole saved New once Testament. Once and for all. The yeah. whole New Testament. I mean, what did Jesus die for? Not so he could come up and down the cross 20 times every time yeah. you sin. Exactly. No, he died once and for all for your sins. Yes, you are saved. That's but it. maybe they're not saved. Yep. Maybe they don't teach saving. Maybe yeah. they don't teach redemption. I, I feel like I really didn't see much about that, to be honest. Oh, it was the like it was so legalist. Like, yeah. Now that you mentioned that, you don't see anything about being saved in well, God. They no. wouldn't want them to know that because that would give them freedom. Yeah. Yep. That would give them agency over their. Yeah. Lives. It would make them that feel make like Jesus, they don't have to work for it the that, way that they had to. That would make Jesus Lord, not the husband. Remember when yeah. the wife called the husband Lord? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that was interesting. The part that I'm really upset about is the abuse was perpetrated not just by the church, but by Mm -hmm. this network, Mm -hmm. by their agent, by a ton of outsiders, by um, Mike Huckabee, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who um, was their friend. Like, really, you couldn't see this? Yeah. Really? Maybe maybe he didn't. Maybe they're so adept at hiding. Well, what happened with him, right? um, Is that the- The best friend. Best friend. Yeah, Yeah. that was Jim Bob's best friend, right? No, no, that was that was a different guy. So oh. you know how Jim Bob's best friend, I forgot what his name was, he but was I know girl. that his wife's name was Bobby. Uh-huh. So it's really interesting knowing that, you know, he didn't speak out about those things and kind of acted like he didn't know anything in mm-hmm. the documentary. He's like, I went out in the field and cried. Yeah, he acted like he didn't know anything yeah. about that family. But this week his wife put a restraining order on him what? because he beat all the kids <gasps> and did a few other things. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, may, oh, praise God. So, of course. This is waking he, people up. Maybe he it's giving knew. these women agency. Yeah. Voices. He even knew. Ooh. Like, he was in the documentary the whole yeah. time painting himself as a victim, but he knew a exactly what was going on. Victim of being his oh. friend. Yeah. yeah. He knew exactly what uh. was going on in that family. Crazy. Even behind closed doors. Absolutely. Disgusting. It really it really was, um, I think, a great documentary. It was done well. Mm-hmm. The part I didn't like about it is it really portrayed Christianity in a really negative light. Yeah. And yeah. and I think my concern for that is like what you said. Like, mm-hmm. is this how an atheist or somebody who doesn't know God, is this what they think Christianity is? Yeah, yeah. Especially if you have not taken the time to read scripture or learn about anything, Just really. Just pray to God. Or pray to God or had developed a relationship and you saw this as the gateway to Christianity— You'd you would run. I would have. You would run. Yeah. You would run. Yeah. Or if nope. you'd already been hurt in a different religion. Yeah. Of course. This would just confirm. Yeah. This would just confirm all of your thoughts and beliefs. Absolutely. As if there isn't a good side, a positive side to what. Yeah. We believe. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and so. And the truth in it. I think. I think that was my takeaway from it. Is like. This isn't Christianity. Mm-hmm. This is a perversion of it. This is a mm-hmm. this is a man made system that looks no different to me than what Charles Manson did yeah. to, or Jim Jones or Hitler. any other. Or, like, no, seriously, name, but yeah, any other cult leader. I mean, yeah, he was trying to get total world control, domination, right? You know? Well, that was kind of the plan, the right? Goal. They want domination. They wanted. They want world domination. Yeah, and they wanted. They wanted the pride of that. Yeah, right. They do. That, that's well. That's the whole fault with legalism is that it produces pride. Mm-hmm. You 
Yeah. And lies. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, lest he boast. Yep. Yep. Yes. So, I don't know. Any other disturbing parts for you guys? Well, I f- like, the way that they portrayed authority was strange to mm-hmm. me because, like, I believe in authority to a degree, but the way they used authority was to control. Right? It, you're right. It wasn't in love. Yeah. Mm-mm. It was out of selfish desire mm-hmm. and anger. And authority is a tough subject, even even in Christian circles, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the way they said it was really upsetting. Do you have thoughts on it before I give mine? <laughs> like, so the umbrella, they painted the I umbrella. I want to hear what 20-year-olds okay. think about authority. The <laughs> umbrella, they made yeah. it seem like a, a villainized yes. system. I don't think it was that bad. It can be perverted. I think they perverted it. I yeah. agree with that. Mm-hmm. Do you? Okay, good. Yeah. I was just curious. I mean, if you look at the Bible, yeah. that's basically what it says. They yeah. just kind of really twisted it towards so, men having complete total control. Yes. I to think, the point where like respect doesn't even count in that situation. Yes. 100%. You know? So this is what I think it's supposed to be, you know, right? So there are umbrellas of authority mm-hmm. and this is what mm-hmm. I believe. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. I agree. So, <laughs> I'm like a bit of a cackler. So there is authority, right? There's the head of the church. There's Jesus, yeah. right? There's the head of a church. There's mm-hmm. the head of your family. Mm-hmm. There are, like, there's parents. There's children. There's teachers. There's pastors. There's there's different places in authority, and we have to learn to mm-hmm. submit and honor authority. The problem comes is when we blindly submit Mm-hmm. To poor authority, yes, or evil authority, Bill Gothard's authority. or evil authority. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this was so insidious because it came under the guise of God, and where it takes that part of the Bible that's true, mm-hmm. right, and then marries it with an evil uh, agenda mm-hmm. is what I saw. Yeah, but the good agenda would be. The, like when you get married, this is in Corinthians. Yeah. And this is the part that I think gets misconstrued, but I think it, it applies to all authority. Mm-hmm. Okay. It says, wives, treat your husband as if he is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he's that's the authority. And then there's a lot of scripture on that. Mm-hmm. But I think the part they leave out is, and husbands, treat your wives as if you were Jesus. Mm-hmm. And there's no way Jesus is condoning the abuse, the manipulation. No. That he, that's yeah. not who he is. No. Yeah. And, but Absolutely. that's who these men were. Yes. 100%. So they weren't representing any kind of authority. And, and I'm just going to say praise God again for exposing these men. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is evil. This is pure evil. Light always exposes the dark. <laughs> yep, always comes out. Yep. I'm just so sad that it took so long for these yeah. girls. Yeah. And the pain that they've went through their whole life. I know. You know? You can see you can you can feel it. Especially for it. Jill. Yeah, I, I feel like out you of can... all of them, she really like she even has a nose piercing now. I know. I was like, <laughs> go, no, you, I thought girl. it was cute. Go you. But it's just like I bet it's so weird just going into life and realizing that this was just not normal. Yeah. And then this is what I always think, and you can do anything, right? She's she's a smart girl. She can go do much, but she's almost limited. I think fame limits you. Like, you know, can she go get a job at Walmart? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That would be very disruptive for a business yep. mm-hmm. to have her as an employee. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So she's limited. And that's what I was thinking with these famous kids too, who got mm-hmm. just... I don't want to say screwed, but screwed by their parents yeah. Yeah. and their money all taken. I know. And then what are they going to do? How you know how disruptive? What kind of job can they do yeah. that that's not disrupting a business? Mm-hmm. And so, not that there isn't jobs to do. No, but their name is yes. going to have an impact in yeah. the workforce. You know. Yeah, you would have to. You have, have to overcome scenes. a lot. Yeah. Have your own business, and it kind of looks like that's what she's doing. If you work like in an office without doing. like not like no customer service, if I worked with someone that had the last name Duggar, I would be pretty nosy about it. Yeah. You know, yes. it would not be good for the company. No. If you think about no. it, yeah, or them, yeah, yeah. I mean, this will eventually die down, and maybe they won't be as famous, and it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But I'm thinking of some of those big stars like Macaulay Culkin. What's he going to go do? Yeah. yeah. What's he going to go do? You guys know who he is, right? Yeah. From Home yeah. Alone? Yeah. Yeah. What could he do besides act? And what if he doesn't want to act anymore? Yeah. Yep. You don't get the freedom anymore. Yeah. Because you got pimped out by your parents. Yes. Crazy. I, th- I, 
I, I couldn't decide what angered me more. Of course, the sexual abuse as a woman, it's so life-changing. It's so hard. Yeah. And even if you don't realize it when you were a kid, when it happened, it really hits you when you're an adult, you know? So especially those poor younger women. And then when you have kids, it hits you again. Yeah. And then when they meet a, a beautiful young woman, <laughs> you think about those things again, because I only have boys. And so these things come up for me when I think about you and your safety. Like you went to Romania last year by yourself. Was that mm-hmm. last year? Mm-hmm. I was really worried about you. Oh, I, I know I she was. was. She was That's like, cute. I was like, yeah. I know you're safe and you're smart, but you're still a beautiful woman. And so I worried about your safety and the things that happened to beautiful women. Yeah, it's scary. I mean, I was, I landed at like 1 a.m. and I was, I was very scared to walk outside by myself. Tired. I was exhausted. I fell asleep on the floor in the airport in Paris waiting for my flight. <laughs> yeah. I woke up, I was like, oh no, I shouldn't be doing this. I'm by myself. It's <laughs> yeah. crazy. Yes, we were worried about you. So anyway, do you, what, did you have any other disturbing moments of the show? I mean, this is j- the... A, just a disturbing documentary. Yeah, like what wasn't disturbing. It was weird how like I felt after I watched it because I watched it all in one go. Me yeah. too. And, and I stayed up pretty late and yeah. I remember I was like, like I feel this way after watching some like trash television. Yeah. Like I, I feel like- I Wrong. Can, it feels wrong. Like I can feel like like a conviction against it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like There's some wrong it's stuff. It's almost like you feel bad for watching it. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Like it almost just feels so sick that it's like, why did I even consume this? I feel like if it portrayed Christianity in a better light, I mm-hmm. might not have had that feeling as much. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, it was fair. Yeah. Yeah. Except it wasn't yeah. Christianity. Yeah. yeah. Except well, it wasn't Christianity. Yeah. That yeah. wasn't Christianity. That was not Christianity. That was not. That was legalism works based. I don't faith. even know what that was. I mean. I just think it's so crazy how they really put, pr- portrayed the best friend of the dad mm-hmm. as yes. such a good guy. And now look at him. That That's is insane. Crazy. Unbelievable. Well, one I, thing I want to say to the audience, once saved, always saved. If you uh, believe in Jesus Christ, you are going to heaven. You are not going to get into heaven not, based on your works alone. And you do not have to be terrorized by shame, yeah. guilt, fear, and the devil. Agreed. Yeah. Like those are, those are just not things you do with Jesus. Cause if you are there's freedom in Christ about your salvation. Read the New Testament and get some guidance. Yeah. Help, good. Direct guidance. message me. Yeah, DM us. <laughs> <laughs> leave, a, leave a comment if yeah. you're confused. Yeah. Because that is not how you get into heaven. Yeah. And I'm not saying that like when we do things wrong, there's time for conviction and yeah. reflection. Yeah. But condemnation and it's, shame aren't where you stay. Yeah. You're like, oh, I did that wrong. I need to fix and repent and do that differently Yeah. because I just hurt someone or I yes. hurt myself or yes. whatever. It's mm-hmm. not a green light to go sin and do whatever no. you want. No, I mean, right? your heart just changes. It's yeah. not because... Yeah. And I think there's so much effort put on, like if you do this and work this hard and change this and white knuckle it and, and if you do all these things, yeah. you just might be a good guy. Yeah. But I think part of the reason, like, like let's use the, the Duggar boy that molested the sisters. Mm-hmm. There's not really an opportunity for change if there's not a heart change. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So if he went and did the IFLB camp that they said mm-hmm. he did, which apparently he didn't even do, but if he goes and does all these things and works real hard, then he'll come back and just be better. Yeah. That is insanity. Unbelievable. It needs a heart change. Yes. And that happens through education, through love, through truth. Spirit. Yes. Through God giving it yes. to you. Yes. And it, it's not like you have to work. It's no. knowing him, knowing mm-hmm. his word. And I think this works-based type ministries like this. Or especially when they're replacing those young girls in the headquarters, the beautiful girls. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That was a lot. Crazy. And it was, you know, you were treated like better if you got to be in the headquarters. So you probably had less yep. duties and you also felt special. Mm-hmm. So they just set because these Because everybody up. knew how insane it was to be mm-hmm. placed in the headquarters. It was yeah. desired because yeah. Yeah. they didn't know. Yeah. Crazy. And isn't it interesting? Like those girls, they knew they couldn't tell because part of the sexual abuse was just systemic and part of their life. Yep. Yeah, it was. Yeah, well, that's why I keep pushing with this whole thing. Like, they really just didn't know better, you mm-hmm. know? They did. It's so easy to judge, like, through our light just because we were raised different. But 
They weren't yes. raised like us, you know? I guess I'm not judging them. I'm judging the men. Yeah. The yeah. evil men. Yeah. Who did this and who put this system like in place. Because I feel like no matter what morals you have, I think you should know better as a human. Yeah. There has to be something deep in your heart that you feel that it's wrong. Yeah. Even those young mm-hmm. girls that had no idea what was happening to them, there's no way they didn't know that, that yeah, this is wrong. Well, and you I was know? listening to um, another um, podcast. It was on cults recently. And one of the girls who grew up, she was born in a cult. Her grandfather started like in the 1930s. Mm-hmm. Like it was, she was born and raised in that cult. And she was talking about sexual abuse. So they never learned about sex. Like they didn't even learn what it was. They had no idea and they weren't going to school. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you learn stuff through school. Yeah. But so these girls were abused and they didn't even understand what happened to them. Like they didn't even know what happened to them. They didn't have words for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know how to explain it. Yeah. And it was just so incredibly interesting and sad and heartbreaking at the same time. At how evil our world is. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Wicked hearts. Yes. Wicked right. hearts. So how we change it? Love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not really feeling it for um, the men of this organization quite yet. But no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, it is love and forgiveness and teaching people what truth is. Yeah. yeah. And we hopefully become a ripple of that. Mm-hmm. You know, if I heal me, my trauma, live in love. Hopefully that affects the people around me and the people around them. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a ripple effect Mm -hmm. instead of the ripple effect that these people are creating, which is of devastation, trauma, and Mm -hmm. just anger within me even. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's not our job to condemn them. Right. But no. And and I did sufficiently. I feel. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's hard because you like people do something so sinister and it's really just, allowing evil to work through you. You know what I mean? And not understanding it. And they're a person too, which is sad. Well, and (laughs) likely those people were traumatized too. Yeah. Because that doesn't happen in a vacuum. Well, the the mom and dad grew up in the Southern Baptist Church where it was Mm -hmm. even more more extreme than that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not familiar. I'm just not familiar. Yeah. So this was kind of my first exposure. Well, um, I don't know if you've seen the movie Banner, um, under the ban, I think under the banner of heaven, it was, and it was about the Mormon religion, mm-hmm. and they were fundamentalist as well, mm-hmm. and how twisted they turned that religion. Very similar story, mm-hmm. and again, women and children treated the worst, treated as objects, slave labor, same same story, yeah, different religion, mm-hmm. but yeah. you can see why people hate religion. Mm-hmm. I mean, or, yeah, people and, pervert it and make it look horrible. Like what? <laughs> I haven't found it. Why would I do that? <laughs> that sounds I mean, horrible. That sounds I, like a if, stronghold life. If you, know? you grew up in that, I mean, what what are your chances of actually turning back to God? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we have a good God and a mighty God, and He pursues you till the end. Yeah. But it would be hard to open that door to your heart again. Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, when I just think of like think of the trauma you've had in life, because nobody leaves this world unscathed. Absolutely. That's your Something's favorite. happened. Okay, so if you have a trauma, you don't want to jump back in to some area. Like most people mm-hmm. steer steer clear mm-hmm. of anything that looks or smells like that duck. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So how do we help them? How do we help these people? It's hard. I mean... Like how do we share love with them? Like how... I, I invite them to go search for their own truth. Yeah. Right? So I, truth, I, I taught at a church, a class um, that I used to go to, and we had people of a specific domination, denomination come in. It always hurt, and it's always the same story, mm-hmm. right? And it's, I'm always impressed that they even took another chance. Yeah. That they stepped into the door just to see what it's we awesome, had to offer. It? Yeah. it is. It is. And we, there were some beautiful outcomes and there were some tragic. Mm-hmm. You know, there, were, there was one family who really embraced and there was another who really went down a really dark route of, mm-hmm. okay, I like spirituality. I like that feeling of connectedness. I need that feeling of mm-hmm. family because mm-hmm. they were so connected in their church. Yeah. So they went down a really dark, new agey road. Mm-hmm. And it's really sad to watch mm-hmm. because it's, you can see the fruit of that. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the lie of it. 
Yeah. And you can see it happening in their family and, and, and the, uh, I guess the new devastation it's already causing. Yeah. I struggle with denomination. Mm -hmm. I, I think, do too. I think I it brings too. division in the body of Christ. I agree. So we're supposed to be one church, mm -hmm. right? It's one church. Yep. And I read this book. This is not biblical. This is just something I read once that I really like. Doesn't make it true. This is my soapbox. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> is this is not biblical, but it was this woman who had this near death experience, mm -hmm. and she was a Native American and didn't believe in God at that time, but she had this near death experience and was able to speak to Jesus. Wow! And she did. She was a believer after this. Yeah. But she said, "Why all the religions?" Yeah. Yeah. And he said, "Because I have different things to say to different people, and they won't hear it." Oh. Oh, wow. Interesting. That's a yeah. great I mindset on that. I really did love Interesting. it. Interesting. Huh. Yeah. And they would, they would hear it in a different way. You know, it's just like, you know, you and I love Mexican food. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, we can, I can hey, eat don't it. don't forget me. I yeah. love it too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we can eat it like three meals a day. Yeah. But not everybody can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so, so. That's such an interesting way to put it. I feel like that really removes a lot of the divide. Mm -hmm. it's just it does. That, that. And if you look at us as one church, but this, you know, people really cap on the rituals of the of the Catholic Church, like the stand up, yeah. sit down. It doesn't bother me because, yeah. like, we, part of our family's Catholic, mm -hmm. and so if we go to a service or a you know a wedding or something. I kind of like it because it reminds me, oh, yes, Father, God, Holy Spirit. It's just a reminder to me. And maybe it becomes rote to them, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, I'm not, I don't like if I don't do this, I'm going to hell. I'm just like, yeah. oh, this is an interesting reminder or ritual. Yeah. So it doesn't bother me like yeah, it does. Like there's beauty in yeah. it, you know what I mean? I don't think, yeah, there, the condemnation without it is <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? So, but I have a hard time when, when you have a church that says we're the one true church. Yeah. And if you, you know, don't come to our church, then you're going to hell. Jesus said, I am the way, yeah. you know? He didn't say this church, this church. Well, that's kind <laughs> yeah. of the thing. Like if Is you say you're non-denomination, I feel like you, you just put yourself in a denomination. Uh, I, I think so too. Right? Yeah. Instead of saying, I, put myself I just follow in a group. Christ. I, I put, Yes. Yeah, and I think church is important. Mm -hmm. I really do. I don't. I, yeah. I didn't used to. So yeah. I used to thought, well, it's good when we go. It's nice for the family. But I understand why God wants us in church and yeah. having that setting yeah. and having that fellowship. Well, it's interesting because you know, like, what is it? What's the statistic? Fifty percent of. Oh my goodness! So, yes. So this came out recently mm -hmm. that or no, it was probably five years ago actually that fifty percent of the clergy doesn't even believe in God. Wow. Crazy. Yes. That's and so insane. If you further went into why, you know, maybe they did believe at one time, mm -hmm. but now they're trapped into this because this is how they make their money. Mm -hmm. So this is why you need to be careful. Okay, friends, if you're looking for a church, go to a spirit-filled, faith-filled church. Mm -hmm. Get to know Jesus and God and pray about what church to go to. He's not going to lead you to a church where they don't believe in God. Yeah. And and you know. Yeah. You know, like your church. Well, it's kind of interesting because like, what is it? God says a church is two or more people yes. meeting, right? Yes. However, it is nice when you have somebody that teaches good spiritual teaching. It's and necessary. necessary. Yeah. I mean, how we iron need to lay hands. Iron. We yeah. need to heal the sick. We yeah. need to, yes. I mean, there's a necessity in the church mm -hmm. for sure. There's a function that that's important mm -hmm. um, besides just fellowship. It's yeah. just what I identify as by with because I enjoy mm -hmm. being around like-minded people who can share and lift me up and understand what I believe. Yeah. And, you know, don't say, hey, let's go get a drink and drink that away. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, hey, let's pray about what you need to do in this yeah. situation. Let's get to the root. Yeah. yeah. Instead of ignoring yeah, it. Yeah. Let's yep. find out where you are in this situation. Or I have a, a great sister in Christ, Emily, who will just blank point out, mm -hmm. hey, you're wrong in this and this is why. <laughs> <laughs> Emily's sake. Yeah, <laughs> she is sake. Her, cool. If you ever watch this, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that is, there's beauty in that truth instead of, I do have like, you know, your ride or die friends who will yeah. disagree with anything you say, <laughs> but yeah. I, don't, I don't know how helpful that is yeah. in growing and learning. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's fun for a good time, but... I don't know if I'd want to bring that close in my life, you know? No, I, I think um, I think truth is important and freedom. Yeah. And I think that's what was missing in 
this church, this family, mm-hmm. and I mean, the, it, everything felt inauthentic from the voices to the teachings to there's just not the only thing that felt authentic in that family was Jill. Yeah. yeah. She was it. She just knew different. Mm-hmm. It's she crazy. Knew. I wonder what those those uh, younger kids that are still in the house, if there's another them. Jill in them. Yeah. I hope so. You know? I hope well, you can see fire. at the end of the... Let's pray right now. Jesus, <laughs> fill one with some fire. Amen. <laughs> you, know, you can see like, what is it? Like the, there was the other girl and she does like a lot of like TikTok stuff. Like, I mean, is it Ginger? Yeah. Ginger? Yeah, I think so. And they seem cool. Like they're doing all right. Yeah, know? but she is older. Yeah, I just wonder older. if it, the new, the, younger, the younger generation, is the, the show teenagers. still going on? Is there still? No, no, yeah, no, no. I wonder how hidden. they make money now. Are they hidden from Who society? Knows? Like, well, I don't, like actually, girls, I don't know if the show is still on, but I don't see why it would be. Yeah. Considering like Josh is in yeah. prison. That's yeah. really the biggest reason. And the they biggest draws are yeah. done. Mm-hmm. Well, and looks like the older girls have written books and they do, they look like influencers as yeah. well on Instagram. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it looks like they're doing some ads for some bigger companies. I didn't companies. like in the documentary how they thought like, like those, like that girl, Ginger, or whatever, still making TikToks and stuff, how they framed that. They made it seem like it was a bad thing that they were still Christian and promoting Christianity on TikTok. I think I that's like anger. That. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like it either, but I feel, I understand the anger yeah. and, not, and, and mm-hmm. wanting, yeah. wanting everyone to be on the same side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. But I didn't like it either. We were all kind of on the same side. <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> that yes, was weird. That was wrong and <laughs> they weird. They like it. But you know my favorite saying. <laughs> yeah. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah. Like yeah. exactly. You know, there's a little bit of evil in everything. You can mm-hmm. probably find there's always something trying to destroy God's perfect creation since mm-hmm. the beginning of time. Absolutely. So we can't throw out all of humanity because Adam and Eve. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, they kind of did get flooded out once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but we're under a new covenant. Thank you, God. Amen. <laughs> and we don't Thank have to Jesus. worry about that. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us today and talking about this disturbing documentary. Please. Put your commentary below what you think and what we say. If you disagree with us, if you agree, you know, we're open to learning and, and reconciling yeah. <laughs> with with you. Um, Make sure to hit subscribe and like. Yes. Help it us helps help us. you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. All the good stuff. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you. And see you soon for our next topic, Boundaries. Yeah.